हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू सौरभ सर्स क्लासेस सो अगेन वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू इन दिस वीडियो द चैप्टर फॉर रियल एनालिसिस एंड द चैप्टर इज लिमिट्स एंड इफ यू रिमेंबर इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो आई हैड डन आई हैड गिवन अ फ्यू फॉर्मूले ऑन लिमिट्स ओके गिवन टू यू अ फ्यू फॉर्मूले सो प्लीज गो बैक टू द प्रीवियस वीडियो एंड चेक the formula if i give you one of the examples say limit of x tends to a f of x plus g of x okay it will be equal uh, will be equals to that is x will be equals to limit x tends to a f of x plus limit x tends to a g of x so there are many, there were many types of formulas formula that are had given to you in the previous video today we are going to talk something about uh, something different uh, uh, a different thing about limits okay and that would be the limits and inequalities okay so the next topic the next topic market as a star if you want we limits and inequalities limits and inequalities you see sometimes we get functions like say limit x tends to 0 x sin 1 by x or limit x tends to infinity sin 1 by x so how are we going to solve these type of questions okay now there is a inequality that is called a squeezing inequality okay squeezing very funny name actually squeezing inequality doesn't means you have to squeeze the function with your hand okay so squeezing s q e e z i n g squeezing inequality okay squeezing inequality what happens in the squeezing inequality let me tell you suppose if i take this function suppose if i take this one let's say f of x is equal to x sin 1 by x what we need to understand over here in this is that the sin x sin 1 by x is less than equal to 1 and greater than equal to y minus 1 that is the reason why you have this name inequality okay because we have to start from here suppose if i multiply an x here that means i have to multiply an x here and i have to multiply an x here suppose if these values are the mod x even this is mod x but if you write it in this way then you will get like this mod x you can write this as mod x less than equal to x a sign 1 by x less than equal to mod x now you see what have we done we have taken this function in between this function and this function right so let's name this g of x is equal to minus mod x and h of x is equal to mod x and of course f of x was given as x sin 1 by x so what happened is that i have squeezed this function between this function and this function let me show you in a graph okay let me show you in a graph so if i am to draw a graph okay notice this x axis is the y axis so the graph of mod x is something like this so y is equal to say mod x and the graph of negative mod x is something like this of course crossing the origin so this is y is equal to negative x and we are squeezing the sine function inside this so look the sine function will always go 
1 to infinity like this we're squeezing the sine function okay we're trying to squeeze in the sine function from here okay to find its value whatever it is let's use another color to make this make you understand so this is this is the sine function that is getting squeezed inside inside what inside the two modulus functions okay of course it will touch the two mod points those, those two straight line graphs it will definitely touch okay so you can see this is f of x isn't it is getting squeezed inside the modulus function all right that means if you if you if now if you take the limit now now if i take limit for the fun for both sides for this for the top one for this also if i take limit for this also if i take limit and for this also if i take the limit okay limit of what of course x tending to zero you can see the origin point here so we will definitely take x tending to zero okay so let's start now so limit x tends to 0 g of x is equal to limit x tends to 0 minus mod x which is 0 again limit x tends to 0 uh, h of x sorry one sec h of x is equal to limit x tends to 0 mod x which is 0 now that implies limit x tends to 0 f of x which is equal to limit x tends to 0 x sine 1 by x will give you again a 0 so did you understand how the square is uh, how the squeeze principle is working or the how the squeeze inequality is working so we are trying to squeeze in the value of f of x in between two functions that is g of x and h of x okay we are squeezing this we are squeezing this function this sin x function this sin x function is getting squeezed inside the two functions so the understanding very simply and very nicely i have drawn it for you to make you understand okay this is x dash of course and uh, the down one will be y dash definitely okay so that's y dash all right now notice that from this squeeze inequality from this squeeze inequality the squeezing inequality we get a principle okay we get a theorem or a principle that is called the squeeze principle okay it is called the squeeze principle so let's ch check what is the squeeze principle let's write that squeeze principle so i hope you have understood the squeeze inequality because depending on the squeeze inequality we are going to do the squeeze principle okay so just give a star squeeze principle okay so what is the squeeze principle what is the squeeze principle the squeeze principle says that if if it happens that f of x is less than equal to g of x which is less than equal to h of x if this happens okay uh, uh, for and if and if f of x tends to some limit l okay and h of x also tends to some limit l that implies g of x will also tend to some limit that would be l okay as of course as x tends to some point a okay so what does the squeeze principle say the squeeze principle is saying that if we have a 
pattern in this form where a function uh, where g of x the function is greater than or equal to one fu one function and then it is less than or equal to another function okay less than or equal to another so look at this function g of x is greater than or equal to f of x but less than or equal to h of x then this g of x will tend to some limit l because f of x is tending to some limit l and h of x is uh, tending to some limit l which I have already showed from this squeeze inequality. Okay. Very simple to understand. Alright. So, now I am going to show you uh, 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 what do you say, example on this and uh, I had already taken that example on top to show you. If you notice, I had taken this one which I just showed you in the squeeze inequality part. Okay. Now I am going to show you this one, okay, using the squeeze principle. What is the value of this? All of you all know, you all have studied in class 11 and class 12. You all know the value of, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> limit x tends to infinity sine 1 by x. You all know the value. But I am going to show you by using the theorem, okay, the squeeze principle theorem. I am going to show you, okay. So concentrate on what I am going to do. So let's do it. First of all, this is an example. Example. So we will start with we know limit n tends to infinity sine 1 by x is equal to 0. And how does this happen? We are, this is the solution. Okay. So concentrate on the solution, how it's happening. So let us take, suppose, limit, not limit, sorry, hold on. So we start with we know. We know sine 1 by x is less than or equal to 1 and greater than or equal to minus 1, isn't it? We already know that. Now, if you do this, this is what will happen. So, if I if I multiply, if if I if I multiply uh, sine one by x, sorry, that wouldn't be the example. Uh, I had taken the example as sine of x, uh, sine of x by x. So, uh, sorry, that that wouldn't be the example. Just let me just correct this. This would be the wrong example to take. Okay, so let me just correct this. That is not the example. This is the example. Okay, sine x divided by x. Made a mistake in this. Sine x divided by x. All of you all know what sine x divided by x is because I was writing this one. So by mistake I wrote this one because I'm not remembering or writing from somewhere. So that's why. Uh, actually, I'm remembering. Okay, what the function what function we are supposed to use okay so let us change that function nothing to worry about let us change this function okay let us change this function to simply what it is supposed to be sin x by x all right so you got to remove this so we know now so concentrate we know that sin x is less than equal to 1 but greater than equal to minus 1 you all know the range of sine x okay now if i multiply 1 by x on both sides so i do minus 1 by x less than equal to sine x divide by x less than equal to 1 by x now if i start taking limit tending to infinity on everywhere so limit x tends to infinity okay minus 1 by x is less than equal to limit okay x tends to infinity sine x by x okay this part and let's write the next part here limit uh, a limit x tends to infinity 1 by x suppose okay 1 by x not suppose it is okay so it is uh, okay so that means uh, let's write this uh, properly you may not 
be understanding from what is happening over here so if i write this once again so i would write it like this limit let's write it a little bit smaller so that fit it in one line and x tends to infinity 1 by x is less than equal to limit x tends to infinity sin x divided by x is less than equal to limit x tends to infinity 1 by x so this is exactly what i was trying to write in one line okay so not a problem not a problem written it once again now you know what does this become this becomes zero less than equal to uh, limit mm. n tends to infinity sin x by x okay less than equal to zero so you see if this is taken as g if this 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 value is taken as g of x or f of x anything f of x and this value is taken as h of x this function is taken as h of x and this function is taken as f of x then automatically this function becomes g of x so you can see f of x tending to 0 h of x also tending to 0 that implies the g of x will also tend to 0 so that means that means so uh, since since f of x tends to 0 h of x tends to 0 implies uh, f implies g of x which is equal to sin x by x will also tend to 0 okay so limit and uh, x tends to infinity sin x by x is equal to 0 all right so this is basically the squeeze principle or the squeeze theorem that we are talking about so let us just go ahead and uh, look back to what we have done we have done a lot of things today okay a lot of drawing and a lot of mathematics over here so we first started with limits of limits and inequalities okay where i showed you how we can find the limit of this or the limit of this and this i had uh, made a little uh, mistake which i have modified not to, not to worry about because i was copying this one by x so i simply wrote this also as one by x but not to worry i have changed it okay so in the squeezing inequality what can you see in the squeezing inequality part in the squeezing inequality it says that since f of x is given as x sin x then we need to squeeze this function between two different functions so how do we squeeze that first of all you use your inequality because it's inequality you use the inequality use the range of sine x sine 1 by x is always less than equal to 1 and greater than equal to minus 1 that implies when we multiply the mod x on both sides so you will get it in this way so mod x for this part means x mm. okay so g of x is taken as mod negative mod x h is, x is taken as mod x when we start putting limit x tends to 0 so you can see how i have squeezed in this function i have i have squeezed in the x sin 1 by x function inside okay so x sin 1 by x function is squeezed inside the two mod x functions okay x sin 1 by x function is squeezed in inside the mod x functions okay now we what do we do we take its limit tending to 0 why tending to 0 because you can see it's tending to 0 okay don't get confused you can see this this x va this sine value is tending to 0 okay this graph is tending to 0 sine graph and also this mod x graph from here it's tending to 0 and the negative one from here positive one from here yeah, they are all going to 0 so that's why we take limit x tends to 0 so as we do that limit, limit x tends to 0 what do we get what do we get we get limit x tends to 0 the first one g of x is 0 simple put 0 so it becomes 0 then h of x is also 0 right 
h of x is 0. So this two are 0 according to squeeze principle, according to squeeze inequality, the one that is squeezed in will also be equal to 0. Simple, simple logic, okay? Don't worry about anything, it's simple, simple logic. Next one, we go on to explaining from the squeeze inequality, we go on to explaining the squeeze principle. And the squeeze principle says what? If we have some sort of function like this, where f of x is less than or equal to g of x and g of x is less than or equal to h of x that means g of x is in the middle if f of x is tending to some limit l and h of x is tending to some limit l then g of x would also tend to the same limit l depending that x is tending to the same value okay so understanding this using that principle this is the example on it we already know that limit of n ten x tends to infinity very big, very big mistake limit of x tends to infinity okay so limit of x tends to infinity sin x by x is zero why simple from the squeeze principle so what is the range of sin x by x from one to minus one then you multiply one by x on both sides so you get this now take the limit n tends to infinity okay for both of them n tends to infinity all three of them actually all right now from here we've got this whole part written in another line straight line okay so we can easily see that the first function f of x is tending to zero the second function h of x is again tending to 0 that implies the middle function will also tend to 0 this function will also tend to 0 okay so here you can see okay so you see g of x tending to 0 all right simple using the squeeze principle because h of x also has a limit 0 which i had taken as l this also has a limit 0 that is also l then this will also have a limit 0 that is also l okay so l okay so this is the value okay so that's enough for this video and we will continue this in the next video thank you for watching and keep taking as much help as possible because all the help you need will be provided at source class classes thank you very much